record some epic talking well that's good because uh that's what we're here to do just want to real quick say thank you to everybody who's been listening and thank you to uh everybody that's been subscribing on youtube we appreciate it um if you are watching on youtube make sure you uh give us a subscribe and like the video and comment we love hearing your guys feedback uh we're gonna jump right into it today we got a very special guest for you we're going to go ahead and introduce him here real quick. Will, DJ Stress, works hard and knows how to rock a party. He's got a bachelor's in science from UCI. His impressive club and nightlife talent has led him to perform on stage with artists such as Fat Joe, Neo, Ice Cube, DMX, and others. He's a Twitch partner and the leader of the Doja, ooh, and the leader of the Doja Stress movement. He's one of the owners of the legendary DJ Bags Jetpack. He's a part. He's a part of the Killer Tomatoes crew. Please help us welcome DJ Stress. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on, guys? How you doing? Thank you for joining us today. We're, uh, we're super hyped about it. Thank you for having me. Of course, everybody loves to uh, compliment your opening. Of course, it's killer. But you know what? As beautiful as the music is. Can we talk about how beautiful and photogenic you guys were with all them poses? I mean, can we shine some light on you guys for that? That's what I really think makes that opener uh, what it is, man. You guys absolutely killed it. I love it. <laughs> well, thanks. Right, so, we, uh, we're going to do part two of that here soon, hopefully. Oh, my God. What, what can I do to get a cameo in that? Come on, a little cameo. Come on. Let me, let me get a little. Just, <laughs> just fly out to Vegas this coming week. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. That might happen. Yeah. Actually, you know how uh, that came about is Fuse has his boy. Uh, give him a little drop here, Fuse. Uh, Chris at Twin Spires Photography here in, in Cincinnati. 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 Uh, Fuse Fuse hired him. I just happened to be in town, and he said, hey, I'm getting a, a, a 90s Beastie Boys vibe from you guys. What do you think? And I said, sold. And that's it. <laughs> And, uh, yeah. and and he took it from there. I swear he was. He told us what to do. He told us how to pose. He d- he ran the rest of it, and it was epic, dude. So, yeah, oh, shout yeah. out to him, dude. Shout out to shout Chris. out to you, Mom, for giving you all such handsome faces for that video. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just messing around. Let's go. We're gonna jump right into these uh, rapid fires that end up not being so rapid fire here, and uh, we got these uh, these sweet videos to uh, start the segment. So here we go. <laughs> it's now time for rapid fire all right there's the uh, sweet rapid fire video and like we said a lot of times these don't get to be quite so rapid fire but we're gonna we're gonna get started with it so the last thing you listen to on spotify or itunes or whatever you choose to listen to music on Right. I I tend to use Spotify more like it's crazy. I don't know what it is. I use Spotify more for like playlists when I'm doing weddings and stuff. I personally use uh, Apple Music. Last thing I've heard was uh, it's a fairly new song. There's this artist named Jay Brown, uh, a little bit more on the independent side. So letter J Brown. And uh, he's got a song called Simpin'. It's really dope. It's on like an R&B kind of vibe, you know, Um, He's uh he's he's been killing. I think he has uh some other songs. He's got something coming out with Nelly or something like that. But yo, that that song is killing it. So I think that I looked up and that was like the last song I heard. It's a real good one. Nice. Where can I play that? Because I'm writing it down. I'm I'm trying to make notes of all these things. <laughs> Where what 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 vibe am I playing that in? It's it's like an 80 BPM. You know, it's not like a it's a banger, but not like maybe like gonna get the club the, the club going. You know what I mean? Um, is it uh, is it like a uh, cocktail vibe? What are you thinking? Well, it's more like a modern R and B vibe. Let's let's say like that. That definitely it's got it's got good drums, but it's like an eighty BPM. It's more like 
uh, I'm trying to think of an example, you know, um, like I think it can get remixed and it'll be pretty hot. But as far as, uh, yeah, maybe a cocktail, maybe a cocktail, maybe a dinner, maybe a dinner for sure. If they give you like a little bit slightly more upbeat R&B stuff on that list, it'll definitely mix it in. You know what I mean? Like maybe like they give you like some Lauren Hill or some Alicia Keys or something like that or some Usher, you know, that you can get I, I, I put it out. right in that. All right. Next we got. I like it. Favorite thing to do when you're not DJing. Mm, sleep. I love to sleep. Love to sleep. One of the most important investments you could ever put down. Forget your car, forget your house, forget this, is how comfortable your bed is. And I made sure my bed is very comfortable. So I'm definitely reaping the award. Sleep is, hmm, that's key. Good What'd sleep. Yeah, a sleep out. number? Uh, well, okay. It's a, it's a memory foam. Let's just say that. It's a nice, durable memory foam. It's not like a Tempur-Pedic. I can't remember the exact name of the brand. Um, but it is, um, it is uh, without a doubt, without a doubt, the most comfortable bed I've ever been in. All right, all right. All right. I, I actually agree with you very, very much so on this. I think it's an underrated thing. Super underrated. Um, you know, sleep is actually a very underrated pillar of health. You know, people think about your diet. People think about exercise. People think about that. But sleep is actually real, real big part, you know, your brain. And I don't want to get too scientific, but, you know, word up on sleep, man. It's very, very important. No, it's okay. And we actually haven't really talked about that much on here about how sleeping is important. And I do think it's important. I actually invested in a sleep number bed quite a few years ago. And it was nice. one of the best. It was one of the best things that I did. I couldn't agree on more on the as the, DJs. We, we come home late, you know, and a lot of us still have regular things to do in the day. So we got to maximize the time that we get. Actually, yeah. uh, I have I have a joke, a running joke with a couple of my friends that uh <clears throat> I feel that I get uh, sleep hated on, right? It's like I get I get sleep shamed. Why are you still in bed? Why are you still in bed? Why? You know, people are texting me and it's like eleven. I'm and they're like, "Oh, you're still sleeping, huh?" I'm going, "Well, dude, I work nights. You know, I don't understand why I, this is something to be ashamed of. I'm no. I'm just catching up. It is just what it is, you know. So it is, DJs, it is. stop being stop being sleep shamed. It's 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 okay. Sleep. Yeah. Hashtag stops. Okay. This is a tongue twister. Hashtag stop sleep shaming. There you go. We're going to start a crusade. Me and you. Me and you, <laughs> Don't I, sleep shame. I've been, I've been sleeping in lately a little bit more than I want to, but, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to get back up, back up and at it early, but, you know, <clears throat> it's tough. Um, so the next one we got is what is or who is your favorite remixer or producer hmm. and it doesn't have to be one if there's a couple that come to your head i'm kind of like i love all different types of music i'm kind of um kind of a classic boom bap hip-hop guy so like you know when you think of the premieres think of like the p rocks you know those guys kind of creep up to the top uh just blaze you know is, is, a, is a good one you know um i mean you guys you guys are very good you guys are on the top of my list you guys help me make the money so i'm gonna give you guys some shine as well um yeah quick, rapid fire let's make this one a rapid fire that that works for me this is a tough one and there's no wrong way to answer it but okay. what is a popular song that you should be playing if you're like djing out in a bar or a club but it makes you cringe and you refuse to play it ha, all right I just kind of mentioned the whole boom bap thing. Let me preface this by saying um, when I started music, I was a lot younger and I was kind of one of those guys. It was very brief. It was short lived. So when I started DJing, I was kind of like, yo, I'm, I'm here to play some real music. Yo, let me show you it, it. But the reason why I think the longevity is there, why I, I kept going wasn't necessarily the type of music I was playing. I think I, what I fell in love with really the interaction, you know, I got addicted to that. The, seeing the hands go up, I got addicted to hearing that collective, like, ah, you know, and that's what really kept me going to DJ. Not necessarily because I'm going to sit here and play like the rawest hip hop or like the most obscure indie sort of shit, even though I love doing that. It brings me a type of joy that I might not, you know, get when you're playing some pretty popular stuff. Um, so having said that, like, I have really been able to disconnect like the content of the song 
versus like form and function of what I'm trying to accomplish when I'm at a party, right? Having said that, there are still songs when I I'm I gotta be like, what the fuck is going on with me these days? Like, uh, I I gotta think. Let me like like kind of eh, not too recent, but kind of recent. Like you know, wap wap. Kind of I'm like I'm like what what's going? On? I don't know. I don't know if other people answered this. I don't know. That one I'm kind of like I just kind of look around. I'm like, really, this works. Like I get it. These are hot artists, but like. And then on top of that, the song ain't even, it's like, it's like, you know, I get it that BPM is cool, but it didn't even bump in even for that BPM. They ain't like, I don't know. It's, it's real. Like, I don't see a lot of substance in that song. One song, I think, you know, always kind of bugged me a little bit. Now that I think about it, I mean, it always worked. Like the girl, the ladies love it, but it's, um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to be a hater, but, um, um, Party in the USA by Miley Cyrus. I don't know if anybody said that either. It just feels so, it feels so contrived, you know, like it works. Like the ladies love it. Like still at like weddings and like certain bars, it's still like a banger, but everything about it's so contrived from like, you know, like party in the USA. It's like the lowest, con- you know what I mean? Like you know, <laughs> hanging through, like throw your hands up and then, oh yeah, I listen to Jay-Z. I listen to Britney. Like, uh, it's so contrived, like so formulary, but it's actually hilarious that you say this because this has never been brought up, but you're so spot on with that. It it, it feels like right if you go into like the the a pop dictionary and it said right. so we're gonna write a song about the hands are in the air yeah. right and then we are in um the country of the USA and we're yeah. we're doing it. it's like it's so it's the most generic song of all time and yes oh and is. uh name some other musicians that you like to listen to in the song too <laughs> that <laughs> that are cool that are cool yeah exactly it's like name drop it's like you know kissing butt it's it's Actually, like pandering I, I, to every single person you can pander to. I had heard that uh, Miley had never even knew she would never heard a Jay Z song before she wrote that, or wow. she didn't. Obviously, she probably didn't write it, but before she sang it, she she had never heard a Jay Z song. Oh wow, that actually, oh man, <laughs> if I had thought I didn't like it before, that's <laughs> really, that's really, contrived. It just it just it drips with insincerity is how I'd like to say it. So well, let's people. look it up real quick and see how many writers that song had on it. I'm gonna look it up <laughs> yeah. right now. It's Devices. probably no, you're right. It's it's definitely one of those uh it's a Swedish writer, right? Written by to. Claude Kelly, Jessica Cornish, and Lucas Gottwald. Mm. Produced by Dr. Too? Luke. That's Dr. Luke. Mm-hmm. Dr. Luke, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It makes sense, mm-hmm. yeah. And per- Cons- performed by Miley, she had no writing credits on that song at all. Wow! You can she didn't you it. you called it by contrived because Doctor Luke basically is all things contrived, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Hit maker, but you know, you know, it's for, about plug and play formula, formulaic sort of stuff. Ugh. That one, they they really hit it. It, it, it. That one was it wasn't hidden. Let's let's say that it was real, real, real blatant in your face. The next one is kind of the uh, goes the opposite direction here, and we always like to ask this one because everybody ev- it stumps everybody usually. Uh, okay. But what is the best non curse word, one word insult? I'm gonna go with nincompoop. You... <laughs> and then can I punctuate it with a curse word? Because if you go you fucking nincompoop, it's like people don't know what to do. Is that, is that pretty good? I think that's I, amazing. I, I will I, take that. I'll tell you why. So I don't know if you like some old school internet, like this might be up before a lot of people's times. There was this guy, I think he goes, he didn't go by it, but people, he became kind of like an internet meme or whatever, an early one. He was known as Reverend X. You, you have any idea what I'm talking Reverend about? Reverend who? Reverend the letter X. And that I don't think kind he of. by that, but that's just kind of what the, the meme internet coined evolved. Him. And it's this guy from I'm I'm you know, I'm assuming somewhere in LA, like you know, Compton Inglewood, sort of, kind of like a bit hood, you know, um, got the straight permed hair. And he, I think what he ended up doing was, I can't even believe this is all coming out of the memory banks, but the, the, the thing that he did was he, um, I think he bought time on like a public access station and it's like a public access station. Somebody somehow got recordings of it, but he would sit there and play gangster music. So he would have like Pac playing in the background and he's got an open Bible. He's got a suit on and he's reading the scripture, talking about this stuff, but cursing. 
you know, it is just like, it's the most bizarre thing you would ever see. But then what made it really magical was he would take callers and people calling in like, what, what are you doing? What, what, this ain't about Jesus. They ain't about God. And he didn't, he just indiscriminately just started fucking cursing at everybody. And he was not holding back on the language, even though this is public access. Like, if you have not seen it, it's, it's at least good for a laugh or two. And one time, this, you know, as soon as someone says anything sideways, he'll just start busting out stuff. And I remember one time he just literally called a guy. You, he just said something. I don't even remember what he said. And he punctuated with, you fucking nincompoop. And he's a fucking looking dude. Pac is playing in the background. Like Biggie's playing in the background. And then he would take turns, reciting scripture, crip walking, crip walking, and then cursing at these callers. And it always kind of, that, that never left me. Like sometimes I would just be like, ah, fucking incomplete. Like I would just still, to this day, that's how it's etched into my memory. So, Please tell me this is on YouTube because I need, dude, to, I need to pull I, this up. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure, sure I just looked him up. I remember this dude yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 like a it's like a it's like one of those absurd, bizarre, yet strangely like fascinating. Just because he's got the biatch, how it all just you know yes. what I mean. This little corner yeah. that is like, how can this happen? But it happened, and it's definitely uh, <laughs> looked it up. It's it's worth a laugh to. <laughs> Eventually, we're gonna make a shirt out of all of these these words that people have said. Like we have, we've gotten cat, uh, we've got nincompoop. What uh, we've gotten some, douchebag, some, clown, douche uh, clown. Yeah. <laughs> we've got uh, we've got some good ones. Um, yeah, we're gonna make we're gonna make some shirts out of this. It's gonna be good. Yeah, I think fucking nincompoop would would fly off the shelves. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it gets your attention. You're like, did we just call me a nincompoop? What the? You don't even know how to take it. That's like some old school shit. You know, it's like, it's like challenging someone to a duel. It's like taking off your glove and slapping in the face. You fucking nincompoop. All right, sorry. I, that's the greatest. <laughs> that's so good. I love it. It's so amazing. Uh, the next question we got is a go to spoot a go to food spot for you out there. Uh, like go someplace, spot yeah, here. you frequent uh, a lot. Mm, I don't eat out a lot. Wait, wait, uh, tell yeah. tell everybody where you're based. Where are you based? Well, I'm based pretty much out of Orange County, Southern California. I was born in L.A., um, grew up in a city called Cerritos, uh, which is right on the, you know, the, the cusp of L.A., Orange County. So it's kind of like I call kind of both home. But most of my adult life, I lived in Orange County. Um I went to I went to college in, in Irvine and kind of just stayed. Um, good food spot, man. I would say I like. Okay, so I, I grew up in OC. Um, I love all different types of things. One of the things that I really grew up, I mean, um, got attached to was uh, Vietnamese noodles, otherwise known as pho. Yeah. And there's one spot here in Westminster. That is, um, it's just heads above the rest. Like it's, I think it started out as like a hole in wall, just like other ones you see, but it's actually like, uh, how do you say it? Zagat rated or is, yeah, it's like, it's like the cream of the crop and it's pho 79 and some, and it's not. So I, my, my love of that. Actually, Wait, why 79? Does, I don't really know. What is that like? An, is that part of the address? Because usually just they're name. gonna go sixty nine, right? <laughs> it's a different type of different type of noodle involved with a sixty nine, uh, with a seventy nine. Uh, um, but um, you know, traditionally, I have no idea how they name it over in this area. There's a lot of numbers: for 54, 79, this and that. And I think that's it's more. It's gotta be an address, right? It's gotta. No, be. no, no, no. That's not. I don't think that's an address. I, I don't know what it is. But there's a lot of like in this area. And I think it's an older kind of thing because like now newer restaurants like pho restaurants, they they have different kind of, um, you know, they're now they're like incorporating the name. Even my my, my bro Alpha Music used to have a, a, a he had called it pho everyone. Um, but this one in particular, it's still going in. I fell in love with pho like doing the late night thing after the club. And this isn't one of those spots, though. This is like only during the day, normal, regular time. Super good. <laughs> Um, so if you're in Orange County uh, and you like, pho, I would highly recommend that place. It's it's head and shoulders above the rest. And for the listeners listening that don't know what that is, will you kind of describe 
uh, what a classic dish would be? Well, it's basically uh, noodles in a particular, like, I don't even know what, how you would classify that broth. It's just its, its own distinct combination of like spices. Um, and then it's the rice noodle, rice based noodle, very thin. And then it's just like a different variety of meats that you can order it with. Um, and then usually it's accompanied with like some vegetables, like bean sprouts and some, like, uh, some sort of mint it's, it's, yeah. When I first tried it, I had no idea. I never tried anything like that. I mean, it, it's very distinct. It's very good. <laughs> I think what he's asking though, is, you know, if they were to go, cause Fuse is from out of town. Right. And so okay. it's so, so what do they order? What's like, what, what does he order specifically? Right. Okay. Okay. So I would either give you two options. Just get the one with the rare steak. It's very simple. It's just got one type of meat, just the rare, thin sliced steak. Or if you're adventurous, then go with the special, which is kind of a combination of a little bit of everything. So you got one extreme versus the other, right? And there's All everything right, in yeah. between picks. Like they'll do anything from like rare steak to like flank to even you know more exotic stuff like tendon and tripe. Um, so. You know, I would say either if you want to be safe, just go with the slice, the rare steak, or if you want to be adventurous, get the, get the combination. We got a spot here. I've been to it a couple times, uh, but every other time I've tried to go, it's always too crazy. Like you can't even get into it. So, so I'm spoiled because Orange County. I'm I'm not Vietnamese, but we have like like a very heavy community of Vietnamese people, and there's and it's just like there's so many restaurants in Diamond Dozen. So for one restaurant to actually rise above, it's it's got to be really good. Um, but the level of quality is, is generally really good in Southern California for a lot of like kind of ethnic foods in general. I have never, ever traveled outside of California and had a good bowl of uh, I'm sorry to say, bro. Um, so definitely, if you ever come over here, uh, I'll definitely show you a spot or two for sure. All right. Next time. There we go. I'm a, I would be interested to try that, too, because... Uh when people say that like that heavy of a statement that you've yeah. never had one outside, I I'm interested to then try the spot that you just talked about. He, oh, he was oh, here oh, for oh. a little bit, but I didn't take him to enough. I mean that there wasn't, we were eating constantly and I felt like that we, we could have ate more. You know what I mean? I, I felt like I could have taken him there. There, there was just so much food that he needed to be introduced oh, yeah. to. And I don't think there was enough time in the, you know, honestly, yeah, so. I could have went a million directions. Honestly, that was just truly on the spot. I mean, but we are blessed. We have great food here and we have it's a melting pot. So we have like, you yeah. know, pick and choose. And it's the quality is, is super high. So, you know, I don't know that, you know, Vietnamese food is necessarily like culinary, like, you know, exceptionally high or, or anything like that. So, you know. No, but, that was a great call. That was that was a that was a great pick, dude. Honestly, right. yeah, my but, favorite place that we went out there was Taco Surf. Yeah, yeah, tacos is definitely another thing you got to get here is Mexican cuisine. But yeah, like it's there's probably not a lot you can miss with anything you, you really try out here. It's gonna be really good. Well, all right, next time we're going we're going there for seventy nine. Yeah. Right. Let's go. All right, most memorable night in the DJ booth. You know, I'm I'm a classic workhorse locally. I'm not a superstar DJ like a lot of the guests that you have here. Um, you know, in my mind, you know. However, I have been blessed to do some pretty cool stuff. Um, um, some pretty cool gigs. I would like to say that probably some of the coolest things I've ever had is opening or even playing for like some artists. You know, um, in Orange County, I had a good little run where I was kind of like one of the go-to guys whenever we had like a major artist come by through a couple of clubs to be the guy to, to either open or be on call to actually DJ the show. Um, this particular night, it was, oh man, I don't even remember the venue. I want to, yeah, it was in South OC and uh, I actually didn't DJ for the set, but I was one of the, the, the DJs that opened for the night and we had Nas. So yeah, Nasty Nas, one of my favorite rappers of all time. And um, I actually have this on IG because I was recording it first person. But um, so I did my set, did my thing. And I'm chilling, but I'm still in the booth hanging out because I'm getting a good view. He comes up and starts, you know, doing his thing. He starts rapping and I'm just sitting there and like I'm fanboying out, you know, no, no, no lie. I'm just I'm unabashedly just rapping along to everything he's doing. 
And he's kind of doing his thing. So he's rapping, and then all of a sudden he kind of catches my eye a little bit. He notices, he looks again, he's like, and he's still rapping. He's like looking at me, he's like, this cat is rapping along to everything I'm rapping. So he yeah. keeps going, and he, he inches closer, hands me the mic. I finish off his line for him, give him back the mic, gives me some dap. He finishes, he goes on with the rest of the line. Probably the most memorable thing I've ever had at a, at a booth. This is so dope, dude. That's rad, yeah. man. I don't incredible. even know that I've ever done that. That's awesome, man. It was it was one of the dopest things. I mean, there's a lot of shenanigans that happens at the photo booth. I don't know if any, I mean, sorry, DJ photo, uh, DJ booth, but I don't know if anything it was as like impactful or kind of I, I treated as special as that moment. It was it was sick. I love Nas. I love music. It was a, it was a hype party. Everybody was looking at me like, oh god damn, what the hell? Like it was it was it was a great moment, man. Great you got that on video. I got it on video. I actually, was, right. so I was literally recording him, not like knowing that that was going to happen. I'm literally recording him. And this is a little bit, I would say my phone would like the cameras weren't as advanced as they are now. So a bit <laughs> potato film, you know, quality, but iPhone four. Not, yeah. A razor. Night, <laughs> yeah. But I'm recording it because I'm literally recording him as as we are, you know, watching him do his thing. And, I, and then you, and you don't actually see him. Once he gets close, it, it kind of fucks up. And then you kind of see him again going like this. And I did post it on my IG. So it is it, it is there for um, posterity to see. And, and awesome. throw, out that, throw out that handle so uh, everyone could go uh, stalk you. <laughs> it's DJ Stress, uh, D-E-E-J-A-Y-S-T-R-E-S-S. Uh, unfortunately, the unspelled out, because I'm slow to fucking everything. Probably slept in while I was sleeping in. The other fucking stress took the DJ stress. So, <laughs> so that's probably what ended up happening. So um, uh, I actually um, had to spell it out. And um, But D-E-E-J-A-Y-S-T-R-E-S-S, follow your boy. There it is. All right. All right. Next question would be, what would you tell young DJ stress? If you could give mm. yourself some advice, what would you tell yourself? Mm. Um, try not to waste no time. Time is very precious. Um, I'm, I'm a little conflicted about that because I think a lot of who I'm required me to be kind of in this whole exploratory, kind of ostensibly non-productive, but very much like kind of was very formative for like my mentality and how I look at life and how I look at the world. But, you know, I could have probably done it a little quicker. So I would tell my younger self, don't waste time. Time is very precious. You will definitely not be able to make this back. Um, chop, chop. You know, do what you got to do. Um, listen to all your music. You know, take that shitty gig. Sure, 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 sure. But let's let's uh, let's get a move on. Because right now, you know, that is certainly something on my mind. Like, what I want to at a certain point. You real perspective and, and, and you have a higher um a larger scope of things and plans and you know like when you're in your 20s and you know you, you know the you know your whole life is still ahead of you and now you you really like what can you know it's going to take how long to really move from this step to this step to do this to do that. i'm talking about whether it's career wise whether it's personal life all those things so uh yeah i would tell you know Young stress, do you know? Don't waste any time, but also, um, you know, continue to have fun. Um, don't regret anything. Um, those would probably be the the main pieces of advice I'd give. I love both so, of those. Actually, yeah. uh, <clears throat> I feel like that's exactly where I am in life right now. Both everything mm -hmm. that you just said. So, <laughs> with that being said, you you do the jetpack stuff. Uh, how long have you been doing the the jetpack? how long like how when did that start to you know was it just this is kind of a loaded question but when it started obviously it wasn't as big as it is now um but right. were you making were you guys making bags for yourselves or you know kind of walk us through that process a little bit sure i have Google. three jetpack bags <laughs> yeah i have two or three i think i have three too <laughs> Well, I certainly appreciate that, guys. I appreciate that. I'm kind of sad uh, that they're not lined. I need to line them up right here on the, on the couch. <laughs> uh, that's all right. I'm sure you guys can put a link in the comments or description or something. Um, but um, so in 2021, we celebrated um, 
our 10 year anniversary. So we're going on our uh, 11th year at the uh, beginning of this year. That's actually, uh, we're, we're very proud of that. It's a very, you know, honestly, we started as a company that, you know, maybe should have failed. You know, you, you hear about a lot of those companies that like kind of start and they quietly go away. I mean, we could have just easily been one of those. Um, you know, it's just, who knows? It's a lot of different things. Luck, um, you know, right things at the right time. But yeah, we've been around for 11 years. Certainly could not see what was uh, ahead of us at the time. But when we started, ah, uh, man, those were different times, man. Um, you know, we were already kind of getting up in, in age. So so Jetpack is, is, a, is a backpack. And we like to say that it's, you know, started, is made by DJs for DJs. So, you know, essentially it was started by DJs, myself, DJ Alpha. Um, we have another guy, his name is Yen, uh, you know, uh, also a partner here who is not really like a working DJ or not like a DJ DJ, but, you know, he was in the cult. You know, he's one of those guys that, you know, was at all the parties and hanging out and knows the culture. And, um, you know, simultaneously, we understood that, look, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm lucky to be working still as a DJ, you know, 11 years later, but at the time, you don't, you don't know when it's going to dry up, right? So you got to think in terms of that, right? Also, you know, bad companies, um, DJ bad companies weren't really – you know, I don't, I don't think they were catering to the way that the DJ uh, technology was going. You know, um, it was a lot of music case companies, a lot of hard case companies, um, bad companies that just kind of, you know, they treated it as a little forgettable corner. Like, let's just brand this as a DJ bag, right? And like something that, you you know, it's a big wide cavity. Maybe you can put vinyl in there. Maybe you can put your headphones. Not a lot of division. They honestly did not even like really follow uh, through with kind of the way that things were going because of Serato and things were changing from vinyl based to like, you know, laptop based. And we're kind of working DJs and we're looking at the bags that we're using and going to like, you know, retail, you know, you know, audio equipment, retail shops, looking at what's available and not really seeing anything that's really working for us, you know. So it was a combination of that thinking about like, you know, can, you know, can, you know, I, I would like this sort of bag. Can we make this bag? And, you know, what is the next step in this DJ thing? And, you know, I can tell you personally, as far as the way I look at it, you know, I'm a DJ to the core. Um, you may not have heard me, but when I'm 70 and I'm not doing gigs, I'm going to be cutting it up in my, in my bedroom. That's just how I, I feel like I am. You know, I'm a DJ to art. It's, it is intrinsic to who I am at this point. And, um, you know, it also was an opportunity for us to kind of remain in the culture, remain in the scene and, um, you know, stay a part of something that we kind of, you know, dearly fell in love with and became a big part of our life. So you kind of take all that together, becomes this crazy idea. We start, you know, kind of thinking of ideas. Uh, we, we basically started it in our apartments. You know, we're holding meetings in the living room of our apartments, half kind of joking around, getting drunk, half like <laughs> not – Trying to figure out how to design a bag. I mean, when I look back at those early days, it's hilarious. The, the processes that we had to do. We came out with one <laughs> bag and it's like, I can't, I don't even want to tell you it involved like crazy stuff, like crazy notes and diagrams that were handwritten. We're recording ourselves and it's just, it was crazy, right? But we, we, we somehow. Please, please tell me it was on like some kind of napkin or something and you still have this napkin, right? <laughs> like I need, I need to see this napkin that you're gonna pull out and be like, "This is the original jetpack," <laughs> just like scribbled over a Denny's napkin. <laughs> no, no, we we actually don't have, but we do have our very, very first, uh, like our, we you know our little first, first version, which is there's been a whole lot of evolution since that, but we still have some of these leg legacy pieces. We do definitely like to keep those. Uh, stored but yeah as far as those little things now nah, we don't we, we don't got that anymore you know but it started as, as as one bag and what we tried to do was make this bag like the most functional bag possible like we only have the resources to make one we're not coming we, we weren't you know we weren't you know we didn't get investors we were all self-financed and we're, we came from a small we knew that we're gonna have to be this organic grassroots approach guerrilla marketing you know, we're not going to come here and try to wow you and pretend to you that we're like some huge company. I would not even pretend to you right now that we're a huge company, you know. So definitely at that time, we're not trying to do that. So uh, if we came out with the slim, then no one would take it seriously. No one understood it. So it had to be about function first. And we were just very lucky. We just struck lightning 
Um, we lucked out. We could have had a pretty bad relationship with our, our factory. Our factory nailed it. They made like a super durable, super uh, hefty, super high quality. They did all the things that we wanted. Uh, and it just turned out that like, you know, without a whole lot of uh, like real kind of marketing, you know, DJs finally saw a bag that kind of felt like it spoke to them, felt like, hey, this is definitely designed by a DJ. And that just kind of set it up. And we just kind of took that, hit the ground running and slowly, slowly built. I mean, people now look at us and say, oh, yeah, Jetpack. That's like, a, you know, that's huge. That's a super premium brand. And, you know, we're, we're very proud of the work we've done, but um, it was definitely a gradual process. And I wouldn't even know that we're like, you know, like, you know, I think a lot of the, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad for the credibility we have. I'm glad for, um, you know, the place that we have in the DJ community, but I'm not going to sit here and say that it was all like a bed of roses. You know, it was up, it was down, it was hard. It was, you know, blood was bled, tears were shed and, and all that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, that, that things were very, very humble. I think that's just being an entrepreneur and, you know, um, I was actually at dinner uh, last night, in fact, yeah. and just talking with somebody, <clears throat> I sat down and I said, you know, so somebody actually, somebody at the restaurant was like, oh, he's a DJ. And, you know, <laughs> here comes the fucking whirlwind of questions of, right. so how do you make money doing that? <laughs> and, <clears throat> you know, yeah. I get offended by that every time. And to really like bring it back to what you're saying is, you were part of the community and right. you believed in just the grassroots of DJing and the culture. Right. And so the DJing and the culture is what brought you to want to just invest in the culture and do something like this because everybody that I've ever told that I'm a DJ does not understand that there's actually any kind of money in this. There's any kind of anything involved in this. Right. They don't, they don't get it. They're going, well, how do you make money at that? That was the first question that she asked me. And, yeah. you know, I was super offended by it. I was like, yeah, man, I, I don't understand. But but see, as a as a culture and, you know, as a community, we're all so tight knit. And mm -hmm. you you were able to see that this was a missing part and that somebody needed to actually make pockets for cables <laughs> and yeah. pockets for for, you know, the needle bag and just like the records, you know, like you guys have that little case where that whole back section comes out and you can put records in it. It's right. it's that little uh, tune to detail that yeah. when you're really, it, it has to be uh, a DJ that speaks to a DJ because nobody else gets us. Yeah. Period. Right. And you were able to see that. And I think um, that's, that's pretty awesome, man. I mean, to touch upon it, I mean, I remember like we're a year or two in, we maybe had one, maybe we, we'd finally maybe got a second product out, you know, and people were like, oh, I bet you're like, you know, making a ton of money and, you know, this and that, or, oh, you're, you know, your office is this big or whatever. And it's like, yo, everything goes back in and we'll worry about the money later. Like we're trying to make a very positive contribution to the DJ community. This, our bags is away. And it's like, is it the most glamorous way at the time we didn't? No, but it was necessary. I take a whole lot of pride, and I really do mean this, when, you know, we hear uh, DJ say, oh, man, you made life easier. You made gigs easier. You helped keep things organized. It's, that sounds cheesy, but, I mean, it hits me to the heart. It's like almost like when you guys, let's say you guys do a wedding, and at the end of the night, um, you know, like the wedding, you know, the couple comes up to you and like, they're your best friend. They're so grateful for like, you know, it's like almost translates that because we take the DJ kind of mentality, even when we do approach this business. And it's like, when we see the positive contributions we're doing, even though it's something as absurd as, as backpacks, I mean, we take a lot of pride in that. And we really look at it like we're not here to like siphon money out of the community and like hit and run, you know, we're like from within the community, we're trying to build, uh, you know, these products from within yeah, something that i i use and i'm still a working dj so uh that's definitely our approach and i totally get what you're saying you know community and culture it's, it's very important there's a whole lot of uh, you know anything it, there's a whole lot more than dollar signs and to reduce it is very dismissive you know so i definitely feel what you're saying by uh my wife a long time ago i i always wanted to do a bunch of different things right and my wife <clears throat> a long time ago said if it doesn't have the word DJ in it, you're no longer doing it. So, so, <laughs> right. So, if, if 
if it wasn't, uh, you know, like we work for DMS. So, right. I was allowed to do it because it was like that was DJ related. Uh, just but if I reached out of it just a little bit, you know, then she's yeah. like, nope, cut off. It's like it has to be it has to do with DJing. It has to do with DJing because you got to believe in what it is. You got to believe in your product, right? And cool. and and I think it's the it's the one thing that I I could just speak on all day and all fucking night is DJing. And yeah. And when you really truly believe in it like you do, then it all comes. It sells itself. You don't have to you don't have to sell anything. You're going like I already know I already know what this does. Right, right, right. Up and down, you know? So I, you know, I love your bags. You look at, <laughs> I could have lined up back there. Uh, <laughs> I just took it on my trip. I, I just took it on my trip that uh, the, the slim has been one of my favorites. Honestly, I, I have three different one, versions of them, but I, the slim for traveling for me right now is yeah. my favorite because I'll, I'll, I'll pack out. So right. this bag right here is, I, I, I don't, I don't do a, a rolling suitcase. I do this. So, so this bag is, uh, all my clothes, my tux, my shoes, mm. and then the slim has just mm. my, my gear in it. And that goes under the, under the seat. So, uh, right. I I'm loving the slim right now just for traveling is my, is my favorite bag. I love that bag. I'm, I'm and you guys, you guys have six bags now, correct? Six different like uh, backpacks okay. and then. You have the other the what is it the the D loop as well yeah, the headphone is the headphone one yeah that is the headphone bag that is correct um, so um, the landscape okay so the okay total number of SKUs uh, is actually a little higher but we are because of supply chain issues it's a little bit lower but I by the end of this year it's going to be a little bit more um, the D loop was initially a side project and we actually. Um, Started that actually on Kickstarter. And that was kind of going to be our foray into the general kind of a little bit outside of DJing. It's got definitely like, you know, applications within DJing. Actually, it's really like if you're like like a, a USB only, like a record box USB only DJ, it's like the perfect thing. You know, you just bring your like hard drive, you bring you know USB sticks, your headphones, your set, you know, business cards, whatever. Um but it was actually created in a different time. At that time, that was when, like, that was the era of the Beats by Dre. That was the era of Rapper X starting, you know, headphone company Y. You know what I mean? Um, that was yeah, the totally. EDM era, right? Yeah. Where it was yeah. uh, Calvin Harris was showing up and, he, you know, it was going down that that route, right? Yeah. I, so. I think times have changed. And yeah. it's it's truly coming back to the, the actual DJ, you know? I, yeah. I, with the Rev Seven and just so many things, um, right, right, right. So, so the Deloop is 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 an awesome bag. We had a very very successful um, campaign, um, and it was kind of our foray into like kind of the general public, the general music consumer. Um, however, you know things kind of slowly moved back towards you know the AirPod era. You know what I mean? So we kind of reclaimed it back and we're now pushing it back to the DJs. But it was initially kind of supposed to be for like your average, you know, whoever, you know, like your whoever that like, you know, the, the classic at that era look of the, you know, the headphones at all times a day. And that's kind of left a little bit. So we're bringing it back to the DJ. But, you know, um, I think by the end of the year, you're going to see some pretty exciting stuff. I don't really want to get too deep into it. No, you're, that's okay. Uh, one more thing we want to talk to you about with the bags real quick before we jump on to something else is the Jetpack's uh, Death Row bag uh, yeah. with Beat Source and kind of how yeah. that, that kind of came about. Yeah, shout out to um, Styles Davis over at Beat Source. He was really the main plug with um, everything. Um Essentially, Death Row. So they're they're kind of in the news right now. Um, obviously, yeah, Snoop. Really Snoop, cool. yeah, yeah, Snoop just you bought it back, dude. How tight is that? <laughs> Did so, you know about this before? I'm just curious. Okay, um, we'll answer. No, I didn't. I'm not a. I'm not. I'm not a Death Row. I'm not over there hanging out with them. First of all. Before Snoop took over, which is also, by the way, a corporate thing. I'm pretty sure he's a figurehead for like kind of like this whole corporate, you know, um, um, kind of organization, right? But um, they were celebrating their 30 year anniversary. Um, they chose 
to release all year long kind of, you know, 30th anniversary branded stuff. Uh, you know, they work with a lot of high end companies. They were making like, you know, custom like T-shirts, hats, anything to gold chains to just like a variety of different um I, you know, things you won't even associate with music, but it was just kind of cool that you would actually have a kind of a, a death row, you know, kind of logo on it. So this final run was kind of their thank you to the DJs, right? So not only did they reissue some of their classic vinyl, they I think they reissued some like best of. This was kind of like their thank you and they wanted to make a bag for the DJs. And so, you know, I think that's really what brought everything together. Um, Styles Davis was really the guy that kind of really just kind of put the, the pieces together. Um, most of the design was done on the death row side and we kind of guided the manufacturing process, kept it under wraps for a long time and we're really excited. And once it came out, it, it, uh, came out and made quite a splash. Uh, it was super cool. Um, but just to let you know, Suge Knight was not running that office when we were dealing with them you know it was, all, it was a very corporate um you know i think it's um i don't know the name of the overall company but they they're the same company that like owns hasbro they own like all these you know that's right i read that hasbro bought into death row that was a couple years ago maybe yeah, yeah. but how cool is that to, as like a hip-hop guy and just to to be able to work with a record label like that i mean one of the 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 staples of hip hop. I mean, that's awesome that you guys got to do that. Yeah. So that's the thing, right? Like when I say, oh, we're doing this stuff. You also, we we kind of on a different level get to enjoy like these sort of things, like a lot of childhood, you know, kind of um, dreams come true. And yeah, I mean, I was I was utterly thrilled. You know, even outside of the business sense, just just the kind of the thought. You know, it was pretty cool because you know I grew up in Southern California, so you know, Death Row. You know, Dre, Snoop, man, that was, you know, religious listening. You know, it was definitely, uh, you know, as a DJ, heavy in my rotation. So it was just like tied into all different things, whether it was like my DJ, personal DJ stuff, personal music taste. I mean, I honestly loved all that music. So it was exciting. It was exciting and very, very, very fulfilling. Those are one of the things that like being a DJ and creating the, the backpack, like you'll get that fulfillment that is beyond the the dollars and cents. You know what I mean? Can can I uh, buy a bag still? Um, so um, I think that there is with the transfer of power. I think that there is some things that are going on. Um, you can still buy a bag. Certainly, you can certainly buy a bag. You can go ahead and follow all the links and buy a bag, but. Uh, now, a lot of people don't know that, like, it actually wasn't handled by us. Uh, the fulfillment and all that sort of stuff wasn't handled by us. We were merely, like, the co-branded. We we did the, you know, uh, production. But ultimately, the, all the kind of the, the fulfillment, you know, the retail. We, we assisted in the marketing as well. But, you know, all the fulfillment was done on, on their side, on the death row side. But um, so it's still available for purchase. But you can. Uh, what? How long book. did something like this you know, take to come about, you know, from the time that you first basically got the call until, you know, the bags were available and ready to sell? Well, I don't want to give too much of the secret sauce away. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, definitely we, don't, you know, but uh, shout out to, by the way, to our boy, Ian, you know, he really on our side spearheaded a lot of that. I mean, I remember I was really there a lot for the beginning when the beginning, a lot of some of the foundational kind of decisions were being made, but you know, honestly, man, when we were talking about the time frame, he really was the one that really accelerated it. He was on it like a hawk, uh, was super good with the communication. He's kind of our whiz when it comes to dealing with like, you know, you know, the the, the import side of things and working overseas with our, our manufacturers. So it was definitely like a heavy load on his shoulders. But he executed beautifully. So, you know, he's, he's the, really the man over here on, on top of everything else. But it took, you know, it, it took an open discussion, first and foremost. What are we doing? Right. Uh, you know, we gave them some options. We gave them some ideas. We gave them some, you know, quantity sort of things. Then it was, you know, then they kind of took it back. They gave it to the designers. Then it was just an amalgamation, just a conversation, a short dialogue. Uh, that I would like to say that that process probably took about like a month and a half or something like that. And then, you know, after that, it was, you know, manufacturing and and then you know the little 
the hit little hiccups that happen and then the little adjustments that have to be made and all that sort of stuff. There were those two. Uh, I don't want to give too much of the secret sauce away. It wasn't no, like good. we didn't shit it out overnight for sure. You know, uh, totally. Yeah. It, it took some time. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It, all, it was all worth it when it came out. We're super proud of the final product. It's a beautiful bag. It looks very fucking cool. Um, you know, and from what I understand, they're doing pretty well with sales. So, and you guys can see pictures of that on the jetpacksbag.com website. There's a there's a link to it right on the front page on the the rotating picture, so you can go over there and see it. And then uh, moving forward, we we wanted to ask you kind of about Twitch and mm -hmm. how that's been going. And uh, you're a Twitch partner. And uh, let's start with just saying, uh, how many shows on Twitch are you doing a week right now? I do about three, sometimes four. So I, I regularly schedule three nights a week, um, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday nights. And then on occasion, I'll fit in an extra, you know, we call it a pop-up or um, sometimes, you know, um, you'll be a part of like some group, like kind of a train celebrating somebody's birthday or some sort of event or a charity sometimes. And you're kind of lending your time to kind of help celebrate a cause or something like that. So about three to four times a week. Nice. And you, and you crush it, dude, because, <laughs> uh, you know, I know we all kind of started at, at the same time. It was like right. uh, me, you, Irv. Right. You just out of nowhere just put in so much effort and really had all this energy that, uh, you know, I, I myself could never do. <laughs> uh, and I and I think it, it really showed it was it was crazy. I remember just watching you and just like, you know, watching just seeing you, you like come out out of your shell. It was crazy, like into the camera. You know, it was dope, man. Thank you, thank you. I love that we like got Jetpack out of the way because I, I'll do anything to represent for Jetpack. You know, and anything that'll do positive. But you know, when I go on Twitch, it is me as a DJ. I'm not wearing that hat necessarily, um, and it's me letting loose. Um, I like how you say like I put in a lot of work. I kind of did. I kind of did. I kind of didn't. You know, um, there was certain things that I would say that I didn't do that was like, you know, my, my, my Twitch channel was um, like, I, I would say that I'm, I, I just I'm blessed that like I have an avenue like that because, you know, during the pandemic, when people kind of lost their gigs, people looked at Twitch as kind of like a one to one replacement for their for the gigs. And they kind of treated it like, OK, this is now my new job. This is my new set of gigs that I got to deal with. I didn't necessarily look at it that way. So that's what I kind of mean by that, right? I was quite frankly a little bit late going in, going into Twitch. And Both of us were. Yeah. I, I think yeah. I think that was the whole thing is we were all trying to help each other out. Yeah, and, right. You know, I, I think my biggest mistake and definitely not yours, but my biggest mistake is I was playing on other people's channels. So right, much. right, right. And and you always, you, you just came in and you were like, hey, I'm just <laughs> going to play records. And we would just go on because it was fun. And we were just right. like, just, you know, kind of talk shit. And right. uh, you just, I think that's what blew it up is you were just real. I, it, I, it was, I, yeah. It was so fucking real, man. And that's what I love about you. When I turn on the camera, the effort comes out. I give 110% effort. But what I would like to say, it's like I don't have the most visually compelling, like, you know, the effects and the transitions and all that sort of stuff. It's definitely, if I had to say, it's, it's highly personality based. Some, you know, some DJing, you know, but a lot of like uh, you DJ, you're you're still killing it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I And so we talk about community and we talk about culture. I learned very quickly that Twitch has its own community and its own culture as well, that there's some overlap. But Twitch definitely has, you know, even a community that like coexists with like regular viewers, with, you know, people that are known as moderators. And um, I was very lucky. I just dove deep in right away. And so not only was I streaming, I was in people's chats. I was quickly learning like the culture, learning. And then, you know, Twitch, you know, Twitch doesn't just have DJ sets. I mean, people do talk format stuff. And a lot of people at the time were even talking about, you know, helping you improve your Twitch stuff. And I was very lucky to catch some streams there and pick up some really key pointers that I think I implemented right away. Um, and it just became a thing about, like I said, when people were like kind of looking at it as like gigs and they were like, okay, I got to schedule this and that it, for me, it was like, I'm blowing off steam. I'm working, I'm working at the office. I'm going to come home. And blow off steam. I took this whole different approach 
Um, I would get drunk. I was drinking. <laughs> well, and, well, cursing up a storm, you know. Well, that's what I loved about your sets the whole time is because, you know, we would just be in the chat and we'd just be bullshitting. And, yeah. and that was like, I don't know, maybe what what I wanted to always tune in because I'm like, oh, my God, this can be. <laughs> This is going to be a party. I'm, I'm chilling with my boy. Is yeah. it, it, That's what I think what Twitch became at, at, at the very early stages. At least it was like, I'm chilling with my boy. Yeah. And this is fun, you know? And, and that's never left for me. Like, I feel like I'm chilling with whoever's in my chat. I'm talking to them like they're like right there. I'm cursing at them. Like, the, you know, like you, know, you're, you're at the bar and you're just, I, that's how I feel. That's how I talk to them. I talk to them like I'm, I'm at the bar across from them. You hear that motherfucker? You hear what I said, motherfucker? Like, that's what I'm at. You know what I mean? Um, and that never left. That never left. And so that brings it back to what I said. You know, we we came to Twitch because of the pandemic looking for a one-to-one. But for me personally, I found it was much more than a one-to-one place. It was a whole new outlet. They're related. You're still DJing. You know, you still got to play music. You know, but it became this thing about interaction, interacting with the crowd. It became a thing of, yeah. For me, it was, I felt so drained. So I'm curious how how it is as a, as a performer doing this. I mean, I got to feel, you put so much into it. I've, I've seen you, right? I've yeah. been sitting there, been at a, a show where you're doing this and been backstage and see yeah. you're, you have three computers going. You, you're, yeah. you are a machine. And so yeah. how, how do you like co- cope with that? I feel like it's. I don't know that people really truly understand the performer aspect of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, do you understand what I mean? Where yeah, um, uh, it, it, it's, it's truly like you're, you're Axl Rose, dude. You know, <laughs> I, you're right. You're go, You're going to the backstage. You're like, no, everyone, no one come in, you know, cause I, I feel like you'd be completely drained of everything. So, so there are days when I kind of, I uh, look, I, I enjoy every stream I do. Right. And there's some days, but there'll be, there'll be some days where I'm a little tired and I'm like, oh man, should I stream? Like, I mean, not that I won't, but I'm like, oh, I'm so tired, you know? And then I'll like kind of message. So I have like a, a group chat with my mods, you know, and I'll tell them, oh, I'm so tired today. Um, I don't know if today's going to, you know, I might cut it short. Those days end up being like the super long ones. The thing is, no matter what happens, I turn on the camera and it all goes away. And then I'll turn it off and I'll be like, holy fuck, I need to go to sleep. But <laughs> from on to off, uh, it, it's just it's just showtime. And, and the reason, the, the best way that I can kind of vote, like kind of, you know, the, the, the best way that I, I can exemplify that is that everybody that comes in my chat, like I feel like there's a million things going on on Twitch, right? So if you're in my chat, the way I look at it is, you know, your, your, your presence in my chat is a gift to me. That's a gift to me. You chose to spend your time with me. You deserve no less than 150 fucking percent of my effort to, you know, entertain. You put me. in, dude, you put in 200, bro. Like, it is not even, 150 is, like, <laughs> understating it. If you guys yeah. aren't, anybody that's listening to this, if you have not checked out Stress's uh, Twitch stream, it's bonkers. He's <laughs> It is bonkers. He is on another planet, dude. Honestly, real talk. <laughs> And, 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 and you know what? It comes from fun as well. And that's what I love because I'm a fun loving dude. Yeah. You know, like, you know, during the day when business needs to be done, business needs to be done. But slowly I was realizing, Hey, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I'm having fun. Like I said, I'm going out blowing out steam. And then I let all these different things kind of evolve. And ultimately that's what makes it, I think what it is. Cause I'm happy. I, I sometimes I stop and I'm just like, you better, I better not be having more fun than all of you guys in my chat because I'm having a fucking ball. I'm like, you know, um, and that's what really brings it out. It's, 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 I'm just blessed. You know, I, I, I got to say that. Like, I, I think, you know, I, I really look at Twitch as a blessing because I think, it, you know, as a DJ, like I've been able to bond with a lot of like big time DJs that are like on Twitch that I've known before. But even they'll be like, man, I never, you know, you, you're at the club, they're not going to see that side of you. You know, yeah, you get on the mic. You let them know it's last call every once in a while. You know, you tell them throw your hands up. Every once in a while, you tell the ladies make noise. Every once in a while, you say whose birthday is it tonight? You know, whatever, right? But they're never gonna see me like freestyle rap to like the chat. They're never gonna see me do like TikTok dances. They're never gonna see me, you know, fucking make up words and sing along the songs and stuff like that. And I, luckily, I enjoy that shit. That shit is fun to me. 
you know so it's just a, it's just a beautiful kind of opportunity really like people are happy i'm happy uh a lot of fucking drinks get drunk a lot of curse words get said some music gets played in between you know what i mean some scratching happens but it's it's a beautiful thing i don't find this shocking because i've known you for a long time and i just find it amazing you know uh <laughs> Your personality coming to real life is, yeah. I, I think it's just you. Um, it's not like, oh, who is this guy? You know, right. that's not shocking to me. It's it's right. you. Right. You know, I, right. and you're the homie, and uh, you sure. know, you totally deserve everything that you've done. It's oh, thanks, man. unreal. Um, you know, just to go on a, a little bit of a different direction, we, you know, you you do a ton of weddings. You know, how is it? transitioning from all these different types of gigs you do you really are just so multifaceted you know you go from you know just playing anything the fuck you want into doing right. these um you know i've seen the stuff he puts you on some really epic weddings you know you guys right. got all the moving heads going and all that stuff so right. how how you like doing all the weddings and i don't know maybe you could just we got a lot of wedding guys that listen to the show. Maybe just give a little advice, if you will, right? So it's transition from the Twitch, you know, kind of uh, discussion to this, I guess. You know, what was funny was when I went to Twitch, you know, people were like, where did this all come from, right? And then when we started getting gigs again, and uh, I remember I was doing the grand entrance. And my grand entrance is very energetic, right? And I'm like, then then it got to the point where I'm asking everybody to stand up. I'm like introducing, I'm getting people to make noise. I'm like, hey, my Twitch voice is coming out, right? And I realized that that was kind of always there. Like, right, I always had that personality. I'm very blessed that I'm, I don't get nervous in front of people. Um, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of personality. And I think that set me apart, you know, because when I first started DJing, I was just about the music being very technically sound, very, very clean, right? Uh, then I, I just kind of took to the mic to do it. Right. So that kind of set it up, but then you got to go even further, right? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta have a very business minded approach. One of the things that I like to tell people, um, and it's very, it's very subtle and it's very easy, but you know, I'm, I'm a lot of things when it comes to being DJ, but when it comes to weddings, I, I never lose sight on a couple of things and that this is actually their most important day. You know, in their lives, it's not another gig. You know, uh, and a shout out Nick Spinelli, but his quote is always, "Every wedding is the Super Bowl," and I, you know, I think that's such a great quote, especially right. coming off this past weekend. You know, every wedding's, you know, come out swinging. Every single wedding, it's always every single wedding, without a doubt. You you got to give them a, a high level of attention. It's a high stress you know, um, low margin for error sort of thing. So that's like one piece of advice. Be prepared, be detail oriented, know your stuff. I'm very lucky. Like I have a very, like, you know, yes, I'm on Twitch. Yes, I'm, I'm doing all this stuff. People don't know like all the years that I've been grinding. I did audio. I did lighting. I worked for companies just being a lighting tech. You know, some of the early years of Jetpack when I was, you know, honestly, we weren't making any money. You know, I was still taking freelance gigs, you know, still working, you know, clubs, Still doing weddings and then still doing like lighting tech stuff, you know, and, and all that sort of stuff. So get some knowledge, you know, be clean about your stuff. Keep up to date with technology. Um, don't be sloppy. And uh, all that kind of, I think, really goes back to that whole thing. Like if you care enough, like they care about their wedding, um, then you're going to do a good job. You know, that then it's going to show, you know what I mean? All right, we're going to go ahead and get started on a uh, popular segment with the show. We're going to run the video, and we're going to do our Serato Top 5. So here we go. The Serato Top 5. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I wish I had there's our Serato. I got a chair like that. I wish I <laughs> that's our Serato top five video that has nothing to do with Serato. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not watching on YouTube, you just missed out, dude. Because that was yeah, that, that was, was it. Best. Did you guys catch me? I can't even see. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Uh, I'm dead, dude. I'm dead. It's so good. <laughs> oh my god. All right. <laughs> so right top five. Um, 
uh, you know, um, I actually did look it up and, um, you know, not to beat a dead horse, but we just talked about weddings and we talked about Twitch and I stream a lot more. So uh, the stuff that the files that came up were actually very much related to both of those. So the first one was a scratch, uh, like a, it was a scratch sentence, right? I think it was a Serrano scratch sentence, which I don't even know why. And one of the things that I, I obviously I practice and the other thing is I do have a, we have something on Twitch called a channel point redemption where, you know, viewers, they build up what's called channel points. It's not like a real currency or anything, but the time that you invest, you know, it builds up and then you can redeem it. So you can, as a streamer, you know, say, Hey, you know, if you redeem so-and-so uh, channel point redemptions, I actually, you know, will do something for you. Right. And I've actually used this opportunity. Some people keep it real, like basic, but I've used this opportunity to do a lot of crazy shit. So one of the things I'll do is I'll scratch. One of the things I'll do is like, I'll sing. One of the things I'll do, I'll, I'll tell people to write shit in the chat. I'll freestyle along with what they're writing. Uh, I do it, you know, one of the, you know, I'll get into it a little later, but that the doja, you know, he's, you know, the doja stress movement that you you alluded to in the beginning hey, i had i i, I want to say that i was definitely involved in that you were very I, involved. yeah i was one of the main people that pushed that i i i will take credit for that 100 percent. so so doja stress was actually a pretty like it was the doja cat uh say so um tiktok dance that at the time was you know pretty popular on tiktok and one of my very early uh streams uh you know, somehow I was conned into trying to do the dance. And I. No, 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 no. Actually, you did it strictly for fun because you were DJing video and you were DJing yeah. along with it. And it was but, just funny. And there, there, I mean, there was probably 20 of us on. Yeah. It was, it was, yeah, yeah. There was nothing. And, and we had, we, we, it was the funniest shit ever. Right. right? And so someone screen grabbed it. Yeah. And then it became something in the chat as as time would would go on, and we would go, Absolutely. oh, oh, hey, hey, post it on Twitter. Like someone yeah. posted it on Twitter, and yeah, then yeah. it like went to this, and then went to this, and and right. we were all just egging it on. And and at yeah. first you were fighting it, and then it became right. like this amazing so, thing. So I'll I'll give you a little backdrop on that, right? So Drew is one hundred percent right, and he was definitely one of the biggest proponents. As he mentioned, there wasn't that many people in that chat. I was still a, a very early on, had not grown. You know, that 20 was actually like a very good, you know, uh, viewer count for me at the time even. So, like, I did it. It was fun. People got a kick out of it. And then, you know, not too many people had actually physically saw it, you know, on stream. And Drew was one of the guys that really, like, kind of hype it up and pitch it up, right? So as the channel is going, people are still talking about it. And I would refuse to do it, right? But then I'm became, sorry. I'm no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Because at a certain point, it now is playing with people. Now I knew I'm going to do it, but now I'm going to build it up. And I kept, yeah. so to this day, I still act like I'm all like indignant, you know, when someone redeems it. it that's just been built into it. You know, people know it's part of the, so the experience now, it's not even, it's all of it. It's all of it. It's not just me actually doing the dance. It's the theatrics behind it, right? Me hating the fact that I have to do it, right? And that built from that period when, you know, yeah. Drew would come in and be like, and he, he pretty much named it, the Doja Stress. Do the Doja Stress, right? Because it was just a Doja Cat song, right? Drew really named it. And uh, then it became a point where I, there's now I'm getting 30 people in my room. Now I'm getting 40 people in my room. And initially when there was 20 people in the room, now there's all these people who never even saw it. They're like, hey, what is this Doja? Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it? And I'm like, I ain't doing this shit. I ain't doing this shit. And I waited what I felt in my mind a very calculated amount of time before it would get forgetting where I could really now I'm going to do it. And then it was like oh, this stuff was built in. And, would, and then it be and then I create. So what I did was I finally made it a channel point redemption. And the very first night that I said that I did that, it got redeemed. It's a very expensive channel point redemption. You have to really watch a lot to get it. And that's what happened. And then the theatrics built. I got a little overlay on it. I, uh, you know, started, you know, I got an emote. You got the emote. Yeah. It, it becomes an experience where the, the chat is flying. They're throwing all the emotes. I actually, um, there's a guy on Twitch, Amani Experience. He does like a lot of cool different streams. He created his own like kind of Twitch TV awards, which is really this yearly kind of award show for this kind of like this, you know, this corner of Twitch. And that actually won for uh, best channel point redemption. So that born on a, just a stupid night with just a couple of people actually became a 
pretty well known and really a big part of the growth as well. So, so uh, tight. yeah, so cool. So, so getting back to it, the number one was the, the scratch uh, sentence. So that was, you know, um, number one, because I do scratch a lot. On, on Real the- quick, real quick. Uh, shout out DJ Miss Ninja, who was just on. And yeah. you two are the first ones that have uh, scratches as the number one, as the oh. number one. So right. uh, yeah. Miss Ninja Both of you also guys. had that. So, yeah, very cool. Uh, so right on. Also a very, very amazing, uh, you know, DJ, Twitch partner and, and, and human being, to be quite frank, man. Shout out to Miss Ninja. Oh, um, she's rad. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, so Scratch was number one. Number two is a audio snippet. Uh, another thing that is identified with the Twitch, it's uh, the snippet from The Wolf of Wall Street where uh, Leonardo DiCaprio says, uh, you know, I'm not fucking leaving. That's also become a very big part of you know my, my cat phrase and one of my redemptions where I scratch it and I I yell it because I was yelling so much that everybody started calling me the yelling guy. The volume of Twitch definitely got a lot higher overall. So my stream started picking up steam because people were like, "Oh shit, this guy's crazy!" Right? That and then people are enjoying it. And then people and it was a shout out to Melody, shout out to DJ Icy Ice. Uh, those two guys were really picked it up and they kind of, it was like their way of kind of jabbing. You're like that guy from Leo to, you know, from Wolf of Wall Street. I'm not fucking leaving. Right. And that became the thing. And <laughs> now it, everybody was like, say it, say it. And so now I scratch it and then I say it at the same time along with the music. Wait till you hear number three. Number three is Doji Cat Say So. It is Doji Cat Say So for the redemption. I honestly don't even play it anymore at gigs. So it's literally from all from Twitch. And then, yeah, number four is Whitney Houston, I Want to Dance with Somebody, which is, and I'll just go ahead and throw this out too. Number five is Respect, the redrum that I have. Uh, the other one I think is like the Donk intro version. Um, those two I, I, I use at like weddings a lot as well, depending on obviously the crowd. But they're also kind of, there's associations with Twitch as well because uh, there's these things that I have, uh, like they're called commands. It's weighted for like people to interact in the chat. You, when you put a little exclamation point and something in front of it, uh, then like there'll be like a pre-created like uh, piece of text that comes out. And I have one where like, uh, you know, I have like these dance commands. So if you put exclamation point dance and tag somebody, then, you know, it says how you're going to dance with them. And I have like these, Randomize, you know, like you're doing the Dougie with them. You're doing like, you know, I, you know, doing the Tootsie. Like I have all these old school dances. You're doing the Running Man together, like stuff like that, right? And so there's periods when I do that, uh, and they'll, I'll say, I'll play it, and I said, all right, now dance in the chat, like pick a pick a name and dance with them. You know, that's the type of interaction that Twitch kind of also allows you. Respect is I have a respect emote, so I'll play that and I'll ask everybody to blast that emote in the chat. So everything is tied like somewhat to either the weddings. Uh, or Twitch, and that's that's pretty much my. I love all of those. Those, those are dope, man. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I wish I had some cool, you know, like uh, you know what I mean, like the super dope new. Like, but hey, you know, I'm just keeping it real. I'm gonna I'm gonna say one thing. One of the when I first started coming up as a DJ, I I went out and uh, one of the the first DJs. It was a wedding guy, and he told me that he had the respect Aretha vinyl, right? The respect on vinyl, and that was. He would play hip hop, he would play pop, you do all that stuff on vinyl. And the respect vinyl was always the one that he would throw in that was his niche, you know? And and I've just always loved that. I've always tried to uh push that in all my stuff. It's just having having like a little bit of your own shtick to your stuff, you know. And so I I like that. You know, I I, that record just I always speaks to me anyways. I, I love that joint. It's a lot of times it, it, it may be a little less nowadays, but there, I mean, I remember definitely a period where I would throw it in and, and I would, the best way I would describe it was a pleasant surprise to the crowd. And they would just, yeah. they would go with it. You know, you, you kind of got that. It was somewhat of a left turn, but it, it clearly still was rocking the party. I mean, I had a lot of nights like that. It was, it was definitely one of those, like, I would say that I'm, I'm very much in the same boat as, as that DJ. Um, that was definitely a, a, a bit of a, a go-to that I loved, you know what I mean? I don't think it hits like it, it did at any state anymore, but yeah, I still yeah. play it just because. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was a there was a beautiful period when you, when you were able to hit it. And, you know, with the, uh, 
with uh you know your style i, I mean i don't want to just make this just about me but your style is killer bro you you're definitely like you know your pacing is, is dope i remember one of the songs that you played like that i i love to play it and i heard you play with like come and get your love red Bull. i was like oh yes you know like you do that and you rock it you know i'm like yes that's one of my joints too like i love that about you man. you definitely you definitely got your thing going on man thanks man much love dude uh much love. i just always want to keep it funky you know um there's way too much good music out there. And, you know, I think I think it's lost on too many people that we need to be playing the same 10 songs. You know, it's it's like, let's dig new and old and right. just um, keep it fun. So, anyways. All right, we're going to go into our 60-second uh, rant here. So, uh, we got the video, and then uh, I'm going to pull up 60 seconds on the clock. You can rant about... Anything that you want to rant about, anything at all, it could be about like if you hate frozen pizza, uh, if you, if you, uh, I don't know, anything, anything at all. So we're gonna play this video real quick and uh, your least favorite flavor of pho. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Shout. Shout, let it all out. <laughs> is it is it's not going yet? Or you tell me go. All right. All right. Here we go. Starting now. All right. You know what? This is not just two just DJs, but definitely a lot of you DJs are fucking guilty of this arrogance, ego. Y'all need to quit that shit. That shit don't help nobody. You are not that important. I'm not that important. We're all in this together. No man is an island. You ever heard that shit? That shit is the goddamn truth. You ain't that important. Love your fellow man. Make a decision to make your life better, the people around you better, your family, your community, your nation, your fucking world. Make it better. Don't make it worse because you have that choice with every single decision you make right now. Choose better. Make yourself better. Show people some love. Have some love. And uh, yeah, fuck all that ego shit, arrogant shit. Let's go. Is that, is that 60 seconds or am I still going? You know what? You got, you got 15 more. 15 more? <laughs> what the fuck is up with no more restaurants being 24 hours anymore, goddammit? I know the economy is bad, but people need to eat after the goddamn club. Do I got time left? Do I got time left? <laughs> Three seconds. Three it's seconds. 12 noon, not 12 p.m. P.m. Fuck is post meridian. 12 is actually noon. Stop writing 12 p.m. What else? What else? <laughs> Oh my god, I'm dead. I'm just making shit up as I go. Y'all that was great. All right. Seriously though, that 24 hour restaurant thing, we do need yeah. to talk about that for a second. <laughs> because <laughs> around here anymore, I can't get anything. I can't get anything. So a friend, of everything. Mine, a friend of mine was talking about like they decided to go to Norms and Norms was closed. And Norms had the audacity of having a sign saying we never closed. Anyway, yeah, that's that's a whole nother joke. <laughs> yeah, I can't get stuff out here. Like even on a weekend, like a Saturday, it's like everything's still at midnight at the latest right now. So yeah, it's, it's, it's it sucks. It's worse. All right, so. I'm a hungry boy. I gotta eat at, at you know two thirty in the morning. <laughs> hey, tell stress about the Skyline Chili, the Cincinnati. Do you know about Skyline Chili, stress? No, 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 I don't. Please. All right, well, it's Skyline Chili. It's um, it's delicious especially if you're from this area you think that uh, most people that aren't from this area hate it but it is spaghetti noodles okay and then it's cincinnati style chili okay. and then cheese and then some people get uh beans or onions on it too but the chili is like it's not like texas style chili it's not like spicy it's more like sweet almost is the way to describe it okay yeah that's what so, made it Cincinnati style. It's sweet. That's Cincinnati style chili. Let me see if I can pull up a, a, a picture. So, so you know, in the the Filipino culture, uh, they their spaghetti is actually uh, on the sweeter side. They add sugar to their spaghetti sauce. And uh, there's a there's a great little chain over here that does fried chicken. It's sweet spaghetti. It's called uh, um, what's it called Jolly Bee. Jolly Bee. So is it, is it, I don't know if you've ever tried that. It's something like that because no. it's straight up. That's kind of what it looks like there. Oh, I do feel like they call it a they call it a three way. Imagine so you come to Cincinnati, you have a three way, bro. <laughs> uh, 
uh, imagine good. wiener schnitzel. Imagine wiener schnitzel, but uh, <laughs> with noodles instead of a hot dog. <laughs> There you um, go. That's that's the Cincinnati I would try. thing. You know what? There's not too many foods that I wouldn't try or eat. Drew's ate it. He's ate it. How did actually, you know? actually, I loved it. It was amazing. Amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. Amazing. It's. I'll tell you. I I like it. I don't eat it as much as uh, I used to. But if I'm hungover and yeah. I just want to feel more like shit, I just go get that. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest with you. It doesn't sound like the healthiest thing. Definitely doesn't sound like something you, you want to eat regularly. No, no disrespect, Cincinnati. <laughs> but uh, uh, I'll definitely give it a shot. I will definitely eat it. Um, there's not too many things I don't eat. Let's put it that way. I enjoy food and I enjoy all of it. I'm uh, a buffet uh, with my friend, so I, I'm definitely down for some from some since uh, what's it called? Skyline, Skyline spaghetti, Skyline chili. Yeah. All right. Well, moving forward, we're going to uh, hit with the uh, the new technology uh, segment of the show. So if you got any new tech you want to talk about, we're going to play this video. And then when we come back, we'll talk about your new tech. All right, let's go. Hey, yo, I need some new technology. <laughs> You know, this is what I love this. Like, I love having fun. Clearly, man, top to bottom, you guys, this is just about having fun, man. I love it, man. This is great. <laughs> this is fucking great. I'm at home. I am at home here. I love it. So some new tech that you love, anything. It could be a uh, whatever. I'm not the most technologically savvy, you know, Um like, uh, man, I had to catch up a lot when it, when it came to even like the streaming aspect. Ooh, that was that was a learning curve. And I'm not even, you know, all that set up. So definitely actually talk of- about that. Talk about yeah. that, because I, I've looked at your streaming setup. And then, you know, if you're going to say you're not tech tech, which mm-hmm. I, I've seen your stream, streaming setup and mm-hmm. I, I fully disagree. So maybe maybe just say something about that. So I got this camera right here. I'm actually using is my one of my streaming cameras. You know, it's got the cool bouquet effect. You know, um, cost a bit of a pretty penny. It's the first time I actually had to buy like a camera and like uh, you know a separate lens for a specific effect. I just made a whole lot of people scoff right now. They're like, you know, but yeah, this is the first time I had to do that. It's the first time dealing with stuff. First time having to go back to PC from you know years of Mac as a DJ. You know, we're we all you know we all. Uh, you know, pray to the Apple gods when it comes to technology. So, you know, spending, you know, a pretty penny on this whole, this whole new, uh, you know, I never give a fuck about a graphics card, never give a fuck about, you know, um, you know, I, I wanted, I knew that like a processor is important, but as far as only like whether Serato will work on it, you know what I mean? Kind of deal. Um, so that all has been a, a, a big learning curve. And I think it's been helpful because now I'm on the Drew and Fuse show and I'm looking kind of, you know, a little better than my normal, um, you know, fake time <laughs> fucking crappy ass shitty camera. Um, so that that at least one benefit came outside of streaming. So that that's definitely there. Um, and it's it's a it's an eternal quest because I bought a, 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 a what I thought was a pretty good streaming camera about a year ago. And I'm I'm already on the I mean, I'm sorry, streaming computer. And I'm already on a new hunt because all the shit that I bought was middle of the road, kind of okay. And there was like all this good stuff. And then I come and now the good stuff back then was, is kind of middle of the road now. Um, so that that's kind of cool. You know, I think that's cool that we had to add this to our repertoire as DJ that decided to step it up on Twitch, you know, how to get the visuals down. We're now learning, um, you know, a whole new software broadcasting, just like you guys are doing on podcasting. I'm sure, you know, some of that comes over as well. So that's really every single every single day me and Fuse text each other that we uh, just had to spend more money on something. Right. It's, yeah, right. this podcast has cost us a lot of money. <laughs> uh, it'll pay it costs us a lot. It'll pay off in the end, I'm sure. You guys are doing great work. And uh Thanks. and then outside of that, I mean, I don't I'm I'm positive somebody's already said it, but I you know, when it comes to DJing, I, I just with bated breath, the the Rev7. I'm I'm ready for that. I'm ready for motorized controller, you know. I want Did you pre-order? I didn't because I honestly I have like something that works and I'm not 
that's not like I'm scratching it up at a wedding, you know, not like I'm yeah. doing that, you know, so it's okay. But I'm even thinking about it beyond just like gigs, like even for me to have now like a quicker, like what, what makes me like when I stream, like I need to like have it set up because it's a fucking pain in the ass to take all your like, you know, your, you know, your t- turntables out, this and that. And now this, this makes it even like, so if I need to go on location, but I don't have to fly or something like that, that adds that element too. You know, I could like, we can now... Maybe do a co-stream like Drew. Let's fucking let's let's bring back the old days. You know what's you know what's gonna happen though is Drew's gonna get his in yeah. and he's gonna send you a picture and say why are you on that old tech and then you're gonna have to go out and buy one. No, no, I'm... just because. <laughs> so, so one of the things I, I got to say is like I like like I kind of just you know kind of exhibited with the whole video card thing is like, I don't need to be the first to get it, but I'm going to be kind of early on, but I don't necessarily have to be the first. Like I'm, I'm okay. Like I'll never be the dude that like waits in line for black Friday and gets in a fist fight for like a 60 inch TV. That's not going to be ever be me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll wait I'm with you there. <laughs> yeah. I'll wait. And once, once the dust kind of clears, the smoke kind of clears. Well, you were one of the f- first people that I knew that had the S11. That is true. That is true. That is true. Um, and are you loving that mixer? I'm fucking loving it. And I, it was just too cool. It was, you know, it wasn't just that it was, it was a, they got me with the special edition, right? The limited edition. And yeah. The one that looked like the old 909. Yeah. I had to pull the trigger on that one. So yeah, you know, I, I did get that one fairly early on, but that, that's more the exception, not the rule. You know what I mean? I, I think as a, as a uh, Twitch streamer, that's yeah. almost a must, right? Yeah, that 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 the S eleven just because you're able to focus on the focus on everybody else and then just right. look down if you need to and you're not you know the the quote unquote checking your email that people yeah. claim that everyone that's doing their Serato off to the side you know I don't uh, so I will admit having like you know like that screen in front of me it's a help at times but I mean just the honest truth I, I'm just stubborn I'm kind of set in my ways and. Um, it, I don't know if it's a matter of pride. I have no idea. I haven't really thought it through, but I'm, I'm purely here. You know, I've never really, I prefer like, like, yeah, I have the stuff in my side and I'm, I'm like good to go and I'm not, it's cool. It's not, I'm not judging anybody or anything like that. Right. That's, I think what also was a big kind of, um, advantage that I had even early on, even when I was just streaming off the S9 is that like, I had the, the attention span to focus really deeply on the chat, even while I'm in the middle of a mix. And that's what allowed me to be like super interactive, super talkative, super, you know, I don't, I don't want to sound like too arrogant, but like, like mixing clean and stuff like, you know, sometimes I fuck up, right? Like I'm just drunk. I don't care. And, you know, on Twitch, you know, no one's going to judge you too rare, but I, I, you know, I would say for the most part, like clean kind of mixing, I, I, even by ear, I'm, I'm, it's, you know, I can just take it like a record and not even match it and just throw it in and just kind of adjust. And I'm like talking. You know what I mean? It's just, that's what allowed. So, you know, it's just, a, I don't know if it's, I'm just stubborn. It's just the way I do it, right? In fact, if I like stare, stare at it, it might actually be detrimental, right? But um, having it there though, it is an extra safety net. Sometimes when like a lot of things are going on and I'm throwing all these different sound effects and stuff like that, um, it, it definitely helps. But for a lot of people, it is definitely a big help. And I definitely recommend it because nobody wants to see that like kind of a laptop Serato face kind of deal. It, it's, it just doesn't. Right. I've been in places where it's like a a necessity because there's like too much echo or like, you know, the, the, but I'm not here to judge. I'm just saying I'm literally doing that because I'm just set in my way. So like, even when I didn't have in front of me, that's the way I did it. But you know, I'm, I'm not going to name names and I know people that like, they love to just throw on the sink. Right. And that's okay. Because, you know, like uh, on Twitch, it's like, I got so many things that I want to focus on. I want to like have the ability to do that. You know, honestly, it's cool. Like, I really don't judge, you know. So even looking, you know, that's cool. People have their reasons. Um, my hearing I, is definitely good, so I, I totally get it. I wish I knew how sync worked better because, I, <laughs> you know, I, I might use it a lot more <laughs> if I knew how it worked. But I I, I feel like I, it, it fucks me up more. But I just don't know how it works. Um, yeah, but, I mean, 
it is what it is. I don't get mad anymore, especially like people that I know can DJ. If they're like, yeah. yo, I use sy sync on Twitch because I'm talking to the camera. I'm triggering yeah. this. I'm triggering right. that. And honestly, right. mixing the record is the 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 easiest of things that right. I can now can let go. Like, right. I get it. I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not That's saying that. Yeah. At the same time, that I think it's cool that if you can only DJ with sync, that's not cool. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. That is a very good point. Uh, I would like to say that the the people I know that kind of do that, I don't judge. I know that they're killers. You know. Yeah. And I get why they're doing it, and you know, you know, you you take it case by case, right? Uh, totally. Yeah. Oh yeah. And Drew's a killer. Drew's a fucking killer, man. I, I, I wish I used sync. <laughs> <laughs> Drew's a killer, man. Uh, you know, like, you know, it, it, everybody has a different style, you know, different pacing. I love Drew's pacing. You know, he's very quick. You know, it allows him, like, you know, you'll have some DJs that, like, uh, you know, they'll kind of, their pacing is different. They like, like to let songs breathe. The impact that each song has is a little bit different. Like, Drew can go real fast and... Um, that opens up a lot more songs and it gives them the possibility to get a lot more variety. And so I'm not going to blame you because you're quick mixing a lot of times. You're throwing it in and you ain't even got a time. You're letting just the hook breathe. So no one's going to judge with the look. A lot of the, a lot of, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but a lot of what I'm playing and it all comes from custom edits, right? So yeah. I don't, I don't feel that you could just get away with it if you don't have that custom edit. You know, it's definitely right. like playing, uh, a hook into a hook into into this yeah. or into that and it is a different style i yeah. i don't necessarily think it's right for everybody uh, right. there are times when it's wrong even for myself look, look, <laughs> but it guys, is what it some is guys, some guys can rock skinny jeans and some guys can't right it just depends what's comfortable <laughs> for you you're very much in your own that's your pacing that's your pacing that's the way that you know how to interact like my pacing slower and but I work a different way, but that, that's cool. Like everybody has a different thing. Yeah, I think so. I I think Drew and I play very similar, so we have very similar ideas on how things should go and and go. But we also know that there are different uh, styles on. Like we just had Excel on, and one of his things is he does like to let songs breathe through, which just kind of more his style. And so, yeah. and like you said, you kind of you kind of have your style too, which is the kind of the same you said you like to let stuff breathe a little more too which mm -hmm. that's fine i think it's important to know what your strengths are as a dj yeah. and 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 use that to your advantage and that's when you're a good when you become a good dj is like okay well here's my strengths doing this this and this and you know yeah. and and then also knowing that there is other styles too and knowing other styles, I like to go between different styles. And when I say I like to let it breathe, I would say maybe compared to Drew. But you know, a lot yeah. of people use the term programming, right? But that the, what we just talked about, like your your comfort zone, your type of pacing, should be an important factor in how you program and how you kind of space out those songs that have the impact. What kind of impact you know those songs will have? So like, it's not just about like, hey, let me just play this banger and expect hands to grow up at this time. You got to know what you, your style is, and that goes into the style of program that you, you do. And so I don't know how we got into the subject, but you know, no, it's good. No, it's, no, it's one of the best. I, yeah, this is great. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'd like to say, I'd like to say, I I know what you were saying about myself because I I think a little bit you're referring to uh, Twitch. I know I play fast regardless. It doesn't matter if I'm on Twitch or live. Right. It doesn't matter, but. Um, I, I do think on Twitch I was playing really, really aggressive and really fast, and right, that was right. just uh, something that I was bringing to, you know, the table. But when I play live, um, it it is a little bit of custom where it's it's real quick where it's like pop 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 pop, and then I let something breathe. And right, 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 right. Exactly. Pop 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 pop, and then breathe, and um, yeah. you know, it's just I, I yeah. totally a different everybody sing every single person is a different style with it so Absolutely. um yeah totally well moving uh forward shifting directions a little bit we're gonna ask you our uh travel hacks question so we're gonna play a little video here and then we're just gonna ask you for any tips of when you're traveling and we know you have to travel a lot with jetpack and the trade show so we know you got some travel tips for us so here we go <laughs> I want to fly away. Travel hacks. <laughs> All right. Um, 
I got to be a homer. I got to talk my own products. Unfortunately, the product that I'm going to talk about is actually out of stock right now. Thank you for economy, for su supply chain issues. But I got to go with my, my own, the Jetpack's very own drop system, um, which is, you know, our kind of, um, I would say a medium-sized roller bag combination with a detachable snap backpack, which is kind of like your day bag. So um, if you're traveling, we actually took, like you might not notice, but we actually paid heavy attention to um, carry on dimensions in designing. It was like a combination of marrying the fact that we can fit within, you know, overhead compartments, yet like elegantly and comfortably still fit the S11, the S9, the Rain 70. Um, which was like kind of the mixtures at the time, you know, the S7 hadn't come out yet, like fit up to like, uh, you know, a small like SB3 type of um, controller. And yet at the same time, like not look unnatural and yet also um, fit within the, the compartment. So when you have those two, not only do you have a pretty powerful thing, right? You have a powerful system where you have the roller bag, which, you know, takes care of your like anything really. It can be you know, your controller, it can be your mixer, it could even be, you know, extra gear, cables, whatever, what have you, um, anything that, you know, you don't want to carry on your back, but you want to be able to roll. And then it has a compartment that you can go ahead and put your snap backpack, which has your essentials, which is your laptop, your headphone, power supply, you know, your USB, your digital media, hard drives, all that sort of stuff, and extra like sort of, you know, you know, adapters or whatever, all, not much room for that, right? But the combination too, you can fit a lot. Then when you take it on a flight, the drop actually fits perfectly up in your overhead compartment. And then the snap portion of it goes underneath your seat. And then when you're done, you put it all back together. So, I mean, it's 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 about as ideal as it's going to get. Um, when it comes to a flight, you're going to about, you know, you can bring your controller and a change of clothes. And then bring your laptop. Like, you know, it's like the possibilities are endless. You can bring, you know, a certain set of stuff, stack it, and put a change of clothes and extra shoes. Um, possibilities are super endless because it's very, very versatile. But at the end of the day, you have a system that is completely fit for um, international. So it's going to work anywhere domestically. You're for sure going to be taken care of. Uh, just throw one overhead, throw one on the seat. And that is my travel hack. I love it. It's a, uh, it's a travel hack slash plug. But I love it. Um, it's a plug. You guys can you can you can see it. You can see it again on the Jetpacks bags uh, a website, and uh, we'll be sure to link it into the uh, comments of the YouTube as well. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you would want to uh, plug, or or anything else you want to say before we we move forward? Uh, no, just or Jetpack bags. So jetpackbags.com. Um, jetpack bags on all our social media, you know, which is Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, come show us some love. Myself, D E E J A Y stress on a lot of stuff. And then DJ stress TV. So DJ, the letters DJ stress TV, um, on Twitch, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. And what are you on Twitch again? Uh, I, so I, my schedule is. Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday nights, 8.30 Pacific time. So 8.30 p.m. in the evening. Um, style is definitely an evening style, <laughs> kind of in the day, the party. Um, and then, yeah, so, so um, you know, there might be some pop-ups here and there, but on the regular, that that's pretty much the schedule. All right, awesome. Well, we just want to say thank you for coming on the show and taking the time to be with us here today. We really, really appreciate you. There's a lot of great information and just uh, topics and little nuggets that I think a lot of the DJs are going to love to hear. So thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome. And thank you for having me. It's, it was an honor and uh, I had a lot of fun. You guys are a great group of guys. If you can't wait till uh, one day we uh, chop it up and break bread in person, man, that's definitely going to happen soon. Huh? Totally. Totally. Hey, I want to, I want, I personally want to th say thank you because you know, you're such a great friend of mine and honestly, uh, nothing but respect for jetpack bags and you and alpha and just the whole crew. So thank you so much. You know, nothing but love to you, my brother. All right. That's going to wrap it up for today. Thank you guys. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.